Now we break this into, so sticking with our bird theme, you'll hear people talk about like a water only fast or a clean fast or a dirty fast. We have clean birds, <laughs> slightly dirty birds and dirty birds. And of course the water only, the rare and, and very special water only bird. So if you are a water only bird, you may have, you guessed it, water and up to a teaspoon of salt. If you are a clean bird, you can have, so clean toucan, clean parrot, clean bird of paradise. You can have, you, you guessed it, same thing as the water only bird. Plus you can have sparkling water with no flavors, no natural flavors added. That stuff will mess you up. Um, coffee, tea, black, white, green, herbal are all fine. Um, but coffee and tea must be unsweetened and plain. So we're talking about like, you know, tea from a tea bag. We're not talking about a shaked beverage that's tea and has sweeteners in it, even if it says zero calories. So, you know, tea you make yourself versus store-bought flavored type teas. Um, and same thing with the coffees. And then um, for slightly dirty birds, you can have everything that our clean birds can have. Plus, you can have some pickle juice or some apple cider vinegar diluted in water. Um, this can be a really good crutch to use if you are um, struggling. Sometimes people will struggle with acid reflux and this can help with that, particularly the apple cider vinegar diluted in water can help with that. Um, if you are struggling with headaches, this can help. Um, though definitely make sure you're getting your salt content in will help with headaches as well. Um, and then our slightly dirty birds can also have one teaspoon of MCT oil or cream, but it has to be pure cream, not like a you know pre-made creamer that has a bunch of sweeteners and, and stuff in it. It's got to be the real deal. And then finally, our dirty birds. And, and there is, I want to be super clear on this, there is no judgment. This is a judgment-free flock. And the only reason um, that I lay this all out is because I want to help you get the maximum benefits of fasting. Like, we know for sure you are getting great levels of autophagy when you are doing a water-only fast. When we start getting into the dirty territory, you are probably getting less of those benefits. How much less? Nobody really seems to know for sure yet. You are still getting a lot of great benefits by, di by dirty fasting though. So I don't want you to think if that's the only way you can fast that your fasting isn't good enough or something like that. That couldn't be further from the truth. And a lot of us started off with dirty fasting. We needed those um, crutches, those aids to help get us through. And then we've built up our fasting muscle and now we can do long fasts that are water only, but we never would have been able to do that if we hadn't started off with dirty fasting. So I just want to be really clear on that um, because I think sometimes it can start to sound like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm having a lesser fast if I'm dirty fasting. And that is not true at all. You're just taking a different approach to fasting and a really important one. So with dirty fasting, you can have everything that our clean birds and our slightly dirty birds can have, but you can also have zero calorie flavored seltzers um, you can have bone broth and you can have electrolytes with artificial sweeteners. So bone broth in particular can, or um, other types of broth, you know, if you are, you know, if you prefer like a vegetarian broth, um, broth can help with just sort of giving you something warm to sip on that tastes like soup, even though it isn't quite soup and can help particularly in that pesky dinner hour or at meal times when it's a real struggle to fast. And for me, I did a lot of bone broth when I first started fasting. Um, because I just wasn't ready to fast through dinner without having something that felt like a meal. So, even though it's not much of a meal, um, but it feels like that when you're fasting, it's like, oh, yay. Um, so, so if you need those things, please use them. Um, as I said, it will help you to build that fasting muscle, get strong, and with time, you will be able to fast without these things. I have no doubt. I also personally sometimes like throwing in a dirty fast um, every now and again. It's just, it makes it a little bit easier and enjoyable and can be a great way to get some extra fasting hours in um, that you wouldn't get in otherwise. So that answers the question as to what you can have while fasting. Definitely, especially if you're doing the 48, 72 hour fast, make sure you are getting in your salt. Um, up to a teaspoon of salt, I think is, is generally considered the guidelines now. And um, if you are somebody that fasts a lot and find that you don't really need it, then you can start to sort of back off it. But it, particularly if you're new to fasting and particularly if you're prone to headaches um, or blood pressure issues or things like that, you definitely want to be making sure that you're getting your salt in. Because, you know, when we're regularly eating, we get a lot of salt. And when we have 
zero food coming in, you forget that you also have zero electrolytes coming in. And salt is the most important one. When you start getting into longer duration fasts, that's when we look at magnesium and potassium and some other electrolytes um, that you might want to have aboard. But for you know less than 72 hours, that's less of a concern. If you have additional questions that you want me to include in future videos, please include them in the comments. I look at that stuff. I will incorporate it into future videos. And um, I'm wishing you a phenomenal fast. We kick off Sunday night together, and I look forward to seeing you then. And enjoy your weekend.